Hello everyone, this is uh, DB0 once more. Uh, this is uh, another match in the single elimination runs of the Board Game Geek 2 tournament. Today with me I have uh, Tragic, uh, otherwise known as... G'day mate, how you going? Good. What's your name again? Or do you want me to go call you Tragic? Uh, people just call me Tragic. Alright, so we'll just call you Tragic then. Uh, tragic is a much more uh, advanced uh, game caster than I am. So I'm hoping he will spice up my uh, uh, recordings. And uh, he's also staying up very late for this uh, event. So thank you very much. Yes, well, you guys are all on the other side of the planet. <laughs> uh, it's not our fault. But, you know, hopefully uh, my plugin makes you feel closer to all of us. Well, this is interesting already. We've got a wizard on the table. Aye. Wow. Fritzler is the only wizard player in the in the uh, tournament, as far as I know, and he's also one of the very good players. He's uh, one of the original netrunner players, and as far as I know, he was European champion as well. So right, right. he's bound to make some good plays and make that wizard sign. Um, well, he's probably going to be very aggressive then, isn't he? Like, he's using wizard, he's going to be trashing cards, he's going to have lots of ice yeah. trying to run through Yeah, absolutely. Trash. Unfortunately, uh, Waylands don't tend to run a lot of uh, trash assets. Um, fortunately, this Wayland seems to be playing some kind of uh, fast uh, tracing uh, variant, see there for a Chilo. So it's definitely going to play to the strengths of wizard to be trashing those Chilos whenever they hit. Um, I'm actually quite surprised uh, of this uh, whale that I haven't seen a Chilo, uh, uh, a Chilo play yet. And it's really good, especially with those two Caduceus, it's brilliant. Um, do you, is yeah. there much, uh, do you know much about this other player, this uh, challenger? Unfortunately this not, uh, I haven't seen him uh, before, he's from the European uh, time zone. From, sorry, he's from the North American time zone. And I am completely unaware of him. I haven't s played with him. I haven't seen him. But uh, he's obviously in the top, uh, in the top player, so he must be at least decent. Uh, from what I checked in the uh, Swiss rounds, he was about tenth from the top. So he's uh, about midi medium compared to the rest of the top sixteen. So let's see what's going on here. Fritzl is already face checking. Yes, sorry? Then I go on. Uh, Fritzer is already face checking the Caduceus. Caduceus, unfortunately, is really good against that because it uh, makes his money back unless the runner opts to uh, waste the three. And um, so that is very much to the benefit of the uh, runner, of the corporation when the uh, runner face check Caduceus. Um, but it's also a real giveaway, this card. I mean, he's, he's basically saying there's something in my HQ because uh, what you know like you wouldn't play this card just uh, blind I don't think uh, the Caduceus you mean yeah oh yeah you absolutely would you play uh, you always start with uh, this uh, ice uh, this kind of cheap ice on your HQ RD uh, because first of all you don't want the runner to have information second of all it's almost certain that you'll have at least one agenda in your hand and so Almost all runners expect that you have uh, at least one agenda in your hand, so there's not really a surprise that you're actually protecting your HQ. And um, the yeah, I, I, I still think it's more of an R and D card for first play. No, no, you, you. It's you really want to protect your uh, HQ and R and D at the start, especially against somebody like a wizard who is bound to play a nymp if he sees an opening. And uh, yeah. if you see the imp on the wizard's hand, it's just there waiting. So if that's, uh, that uh, Caduceus wasn't there, it would be first play, would be like a imp and then run on HQ. There we go. The uh, corporation is just stopping the runner from getting in without actually wasting any money. And that's good. Basically... Uh, Continue, yeah, sorry. No, no, go on. Um, that's the classic thing that's uh, going on in this case, in that um, the runner is trying to uh, basically make the corporation waste money at the start of the game, 
by uh, raising some early game mice. And um, if he had like two wall of uh, uh, static, for example, he would have to uh, pay all his money just to be uh, able to keep him out. But now with the Caduceus, he can keep him out and have money for the rest of the turn. So we well, the corporation does does really have does have money troubles towards the later of the game. So uh, you, I think I think a lot of the problems people have is overextending with their their uh, eye, putting out ice and resing ice too early, and then not having anything to protect later on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's why Caduce is so good because it protects and doesn't cost anything if they don't run it with a Sentry Breaker or Link. It's one of, absolutely one of my absolute favorite uh, uh, se sentries to see at my starting hand. I know that if I play this ice, it's not going to cost me anything and it's going to stop the run. Um, of course, if uh, you're unlucky, you may get a runner that runs uh, Mimic, which makes your Caduceus not so useful. Okay, so a turn three with Sekutia uh, actually having a turn. The mm -hmm. runner is not uh, not targeting the the servers, so it's a little bit hard to see what's going on. I think you're going to have to start calling out when they're doing the runs. Well, you see it uh, in the in the uh, log. Uh, the runner does uh, when he starts a run. The game does announce he's starting a run on R and D or HQ. So take a, keep an eye on the log. Uh, you can see it there. I mean, I mean, for the the viewers who are like watching it in like small windows on their phones true, and stuff like that. True. Can't read the log. True. True. Uh, true. We may have to be, as you said, you may we may have to call it out for the benefit of our viewers. Hmm. Looks like there's a heavy decision going on here. Is it going to open a new server? Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty definite. I think that's a bluff. Probably he wants to make the runner. Oh no, he's not. He's probably going to protect. Okay. Ah, he's opening just one server. And he's leaving his uh, HQ open. Given that I've seen uh, Fritzer's deck before, that's probably not a wise choice, but we'll have to see how that goes. Um, it's very likely that Synquetica doesn't know how strong a runner can be, or maybe doesn't realize how strong a runner can be if you leave your HQ unprotected. There's still no uh, nothing on his deck though from Frizza. You know, you, you don't see a lot that kind of restraint very often, do you? People tend to just whack things down, but you really want to delay building your deck as long as possible, so they mm. know they don't know what ice to put down. Exactly, and uh, also the more you can face check the ice, the less risk you have because uh, you're not risking an archer, you're not risking a roto turret. There's nothing to risk if you don't have anything in the game. Yeah, it looks like uh, Frizz is just going to stand here, just going to pull credits this whole turn. Yeah, he's basically wanted to fill up so he can play the uh, Sur Gamble and then be ready next mm -hmm. turn to do something more drastic. There's no need to rush anyway, there's nothing on the table that can be an agenda, so he's not in a hurry to play. This lull, lulls in the corporation is uh, exactly the moment when you want to be, as a, as a runner, you want to be taking it slow. All right, so the r corporation did play uh, an agenda, believing that the runner probably doesn't have the ice needed, icebreaker needed, and uh, he's probably going to regret it because Fritz is actually holding a Cripsis in his hand, which will make it very easy to get into that server without even using that uh, Steam hack. Well, he's got the money. He just uh, dropped a short gamble down. Can we peek at the cards without interrupting? Yeah, the yeah, game? yeah. You can just uh, right click and peek. The uh, be careful! I don't hit. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. There's nothing wrong. You can hit really, but yeah. Um, so yeah, don't. Okay, he actually drew a card. He may maybe let uh, the corporation have that agenda. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's probably well, going to let the corporation have it. It's a very expensive card. It is. It is, but uh, it's so worth it. It's if you get it at the start of the of the game, you can really uh, break into every server without actually needing a full suit, 
whereas every other every other server every other um, uh, icebreaker is a gamble you know do i have the correct icebreaker for the job uh, i think uh, i think the correct move would have been to to run but uh, that, that's a, i think that's really surprising that you put out the ca uh, carapace i mean <laughs> Not that against Wayland. Net damage really a big risk. No, it's not the net damage. Yeah. It's meat well, damage. I mean, and yes, meat damage. Yeah, if he's using uh, scorched earth, using uh, scorched earth, but it is. Believe me, uh, one mistake from the runner can the easily cost him the game. Scored. Yep, we see the three pointer scored. Uh, unfortunately, there was no expensive ice to raise, so that enigma was fine, I guess. Uh, the good thing is that uh, the corporation went down to. Um, Three clicks, three credits, so uh, an account siphon at the moment won't really help Fritzer. But instead, he's going to get through and trust everything with an imp, and probably still the three pointer uh, that he has in his hand. So that was a big risk from the corporation. He's uh, basically uh, letting his uh, HQ open and daring the runner uh, to run with the idea that he doesn't have anything worth taking. No, you've got to hit the delete. Yep. So what's happening here is that the, the parasite is filling up with with uh, virus counters, and every, every time the virus counter gets one, it uh, minuses a strength off this ice. Yes. Those three virus counters makes the strength zero, which kills it, the ice. And now we can get, get straight into the HQ. But I don't think there's anything in there. Oh, there is actually. There is an agenda in, in the HQ, and it is open. This could uh, this could be a score for Frizz right now. Yeah, it's uh, very likely that we'll see a score because uh, Fritz like, can simply play that imp, and he's definite that he's going to see at least two different cards in HQ. And if he plays that third imp, he's going to see every card in HQ and trust two of those. So. Exactly. Instead, he's drawing a card. I'm surprised. I was actually expecting him to uh, go imp, imp, run, run or something. And uh, he comes the imp. Yeah, he does like to keep his hand full. That's true. That's going to sting a bit for Cinquetica. Well, you've, got, you've, got to get, you've got to do it against Wayland. I mean, you know, like you said, with Scorched Earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see if he was holding a Scorched Earth in his hand, uh, it's quite big. Yeah, you basically know that you're not going to uh, it's going to be much more difficult for him to flatline you and we go straight into that agenda mm -hmm. Boom. three out of three of course um, yeah the uh, it was very difficult for the corporation to actually score that agenda so i don't think he minds that so much he's very happy that he scored the the first three pointer uh, given the how uh, it's important for the corporation to have a lot of points for the second match. Well, you know, there's been a lot of talk about, among my group about whether it's best to have your agenda points spread out or concentrated in large things like priority acquisition. And the mathematics actually works out that it's better to have less agenda cards, you know, like you... It is, you it is, absolutely. Point. But you have to remember, first of all, it's a very difficult, to, it's much more difficult to score a five pointer, a five cost agenda than a three cost agenda. And the big agendas tend not to have that powerful effect. So it's very likely that uh, the, your priority requisitions and your, uh, and your what's you call them, uh, your executive reads are not going to help you as much as an essay or uh, uh, what you call it. Uh, Sastra script pro true, program. True, true. But the, the idea is that you do the super server build, you know, where you like build like these massive servers and they it doesn't matter if they're running against your R&D because the chances of pulling the actual card is so small. That is true. Know? That is true. But it's a different kind of deck. Yeah. And as I said, these agendas yeah. might be uh, reducing the chance for an HQ hit, but they're also much more difficult to uh, score. So they give, if you play with those kinds of agendas, I would also play with traps. So that I can actually bluff a big agenda when I'm instead uh, advancing a secretary or a Jumbug. Because against yeah, uh, be good, good play. against big rig decks like uh, Kate, 
um, where they are meant uh, to run through your big uh, glacier, uh, it's a big problem if you cannot score an Asgen as soon as you play it or in one without an advancement. Uh, is this actually broadcast live or is it being broadcast on a uh, on a uh, delay? So, at the moment it's being broadcast to Twitch TV, but nobody can see it by me. Okay, good stuff. Well, I think uh, Fizzler is definitely in a commanding position here. I mean, he's got, you know, he's got Exposing, he's got a Crypsis in hand, he's got a second Imp, he's got a Stim Hack, and he's got an Account Siphon. And what's, what, I mean, you know, what has poor old Synquetica got? He's got a couple of uh, credit ga credit bleaching ice. I don't know. And he's got a, a, a tick removal ice. It's not, it doesn't look good. Uh, Synquetica is good for him at the moment because at the moment he doesn't want to be drawing any agenda. He wants to be building some economy. Exactly. To tell you the truth. He just wants to uh, play safe without risking his hand and start building a big ice on the... Uh, HQ. Did he manage, did he actually pay to get through the HQ now? Where was he running? I was uh, lost track. <laughs> okay, he was running HQ. Okay, so he uh, avoid ignored the first race and he let the first second race. Uh, and he eluded the second race, so he's in HQ now. Yeah. Oh no, he's not. He's actually ended the run. I, I was confused because afterwards he said, come on in. Oh, forgot the music. So Fizzer used to be a, a really big name in the original Netrunner scene, and he was like a world champion, wasn't he, or something like that? European champion, so they tell me. Uh, not, uh, yeah. I wasn't around at the time in uh, Netrunner, so I don't really know how much of it is true oh, or not. This is, a, this is a bad draw for... Uh, it's decent, he can he play it without any advancements and score it in one turn, so it's not a huge deal. Mm. And uh, Fritzler doesn't have... a. Ah, he does have 8 credits, so he can break through that enigma if he really wants to. Um, but, uh, you know, of of play it out, yeah. Yeah, he is definitely going to play it. But I think uh, Fritz is not Ooh. going to let him uh, just uh, have it like this. He's probably going to uh, keep him honest and check what he's playing. He has the infiltration over there, so there's no reason not to uh, check what that is. Because he does know the well and is running atlases. Mm -hmm. And that's two points he can't afford the corporation to get. Well, he's got the eight credits. I mean, he can get through it. Yeah, absolutely. Time. Basically, what he needs to do is uh, infiltrate to check that's an agenda, play uh, Cripsis, take a token on Cripsis, and run. Is it enough? I think that's, that's enough, yeah. He needs three credits to break uh, through Enigma, and he doesn't need to uh, ignore the click. Now, the wizard's ability hasn't been used at all in this uh, in this run. I guess that's what you were saying before about the Wayland deck doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, traps and discards that can really take advantage by wizard. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see that infiltration? Yes, it looks like it. Boom. That's not what the corporation wants to see. So he's still got eight credits left. So that's five to play Crypsis. That's absolutely enough, exactly the amount he needs to get through that server. He's going to be left with zero credits yeah. afterwards. So unless the corporation is holding a sea source and two uh, and two scorched earth, he won't uh, actually do anything to him. But uh, there's no way he can actually kill well, him. Well, if Synquetica doesn't put down another 
another ice in front of HQ. He's just going to run the count site for the next turn and just take the traces. Yeah, but probably he's going to um, remove the traces afterwards. I don't think he's going to keep them. The risk is too high. Mm. What I mean is, like, uh, he can do an account siphon next turn and just go straight through that ice. And, uh, you know, and then he'll have tons of money once again, and the corporation will have none. So, no, that's, that's the move I'm expecting from Fritz next turn, anyway. Hmm. Rizzler, beg your pardon. Need to put my music down a bit. So is uh, is there many people in the chat like uh, watching watching the broadcast? There's nobody in the broadcast at the moment. First of all, because they're not supposed to be. Um, they suppose uh, because otherwise the uh, other players in the tournament might be able to see and uh, scout the decks. So at the moment, um, oh, right. the channel is private and only I can uh, access it. Once I'm done, I usually uh, unhide it and make it private and make the, uh, sorry, I uh, make the video public. Uh, sorry, I make the channel public and hide the video. And uh, once the old players that were in the game drop from the tournament, then I post it on YouTube. Oh, no. He's got to put down... Yeah, that's not the problem. He can play it and score it immediately. Because it only has two advancement. So that's... That's easy. An easy choice there. He's taking the bad publicity. Yeah. And now he's going to play out the... Probably Arthur, I would say. Yeah, that the uh, art is going to go somewhere, the question is where. And um, that Cripsis can break through the archer, but it does, it is quite costly. Well, if he doesn't put it in front of his HQ, he's in trouble. Ooh, here we go. Let's see if we're going to see it now. I, I, I strongly think we're going to see an account siphon right now. Mm, it's very possible, but maybe next turn. Sequetica is at 10 credits, and uh, for an account siphon, the Fritzl would have to uh, basically... No, he's just going to draw credits. Well, he didn't have the credits for an account siphon, so there's no, no way he could do it. Account siphon zero. Yeah, but he still needs to break through the Caduceus. Can't just uh, waltz into uh, HQ like that. Can't just uh, tell Netty to Mordor. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can just uh, accept the trace. If you don't pay the <laughs> no, money. because Caduceus trace ends the run. It's not a tag. Oh, it does too. God, sorry. I've been reading this card wrong. So what? didn't get to see what he played. Let me check. He played another Atlas. Okay, interesting. I'm surprised he didn't actually play the Archer. Maybe... Uh, yeah, it's actually interesting. Not sure. The archer would have been much uh, preferable at the moment, I think. On the other hand, the runner may be expecting the archer. No, I'm really surprised well, why he, he didn't play the archer. Well, he can. He, he does have the power to res this card. He does, but the archer would allow him to res this card and score that agenda next turn. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's no way Crypsis is getting through Adrian's War. Uh, with a steam hack? Yes, it is. Well. And it's even worse if he, if, if he accounts Siphons him. And if he accounts Siphon him first, then he won't be able to raise that Hadrian's. Which is why it's another reason to play that uh, Archer first. Archer he can raise after an account Siphon. Uh, here's a short gamble. Nice. Yeah, he can play it though. No, it's always good to have a short gamble or a card like that in your hand. Like, uh, I find that uh, running out of credits is one of the most frustrating parts of this game. Mm -hmm. like, when you don't have credits, you feel like you can't do anything. And no matter how tactical the decision is to draw credits for your whole turn, you feel like you're wasting your turn uh, somehow. Yeah, it's the least... And I think that... 
it, it is the least uh, valuable option you can do, but sometimes it's worth it. Okay, so we're definitely going to him his score that that uh, Atlas again. Oh, he kept skips throwing that Zendas. There, there you go, exactly. Going broke is a bummer, isn't it, says Sikhani, but like, that's the frustration that I was just talking about. Unfortunately, he's only one point away from winning now, yeah? So if he manages yeah. to play that uh, card now, it's really putting Fritzer in a bad situation. I'm surprised the Fritzer didn't even run that server. He was really afraid of an Arger, I'm sure. And I'm pretty fair, fairly certain that uh, Synquetica did the calculation and said, okay, he needs two tokens or one token at least on the Cripsis to break. He had two credits. It would be 11 credits with a Steam Hack. 12 credits if he takes a credit. So that was not enough credits to break an Archer and an Enigma uh, at that moment. So that's why he didn't uh, he didn't run. You think that was a wise play, though? It was a bold play. It was a bold play. And uh, sometimes, as a corporation, especially when you keep drawing agendas, you need to be bold. You need to uh, to score those agendas before uh, the, the runner has time to set up. And the runner at some point is thinking, okay, it can be yet another agenda. He must be drawing some traps or assets. And he's basically daring me to get in that server. So I think uh, I think Synquetica can easily win the game now. If uh, if Fritzer plays too but, uh, conservatively, it can actually cost him. He has to be really aggressive right now, absolutely. Yeah. Totally Problem is, the way, the way it is, he has a free, uh, Synquetica has already six points. If he gets another uh, hostile takeover, he won the game immediately, as soon as he gets it. If he doesn't, uh, then Fritz needs to keep running R&D every turn so that he won't lose the game. So he's in a really bad situation. He also he needs to check every face down card that goes into that remote server and keep running R&D. So it's really, really hard. And uh, as far as for Aquatica, he didn't even need to do that. But okay, he's going for it. I'm wondering if he's going to play the Archer. No, he's not playing the Archer. If I was in Sequetica space, I would probably wait until I had two cards in my hand that I could play on that server. And then uh, play both of them, one after the other. So that uh, the runner doesn't have enough money to run two times. Okay, we'll see if he's going to take the bait here. He has to. Posted bounty is... Well, it's not enough to win, but like... I mean, it is enough to win. He has to he has six points. He only needs one point to win. For, obviously, for Filter, it's not enough to win. But he has I to steal it. Five. Who? I've, no, no, he's got six. Yes. I just read I read Proje uh, Project Atlas wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's so now it's Fritzer is really in a difficult situation. This is exactly the situation you want to be as a corp. You need to score a lot of agendas early, and then you have the opportunity to play your assets in your fortified server and uh, let the runner waste click after click running that server, because otherwise you may win. So what's he going to do here? I mean, he's got to run the server. I mean, he yeah. Has, has he, got, he hasn't. Synquetica has enough to res the wall. Yeah. I think he's going to run that server. Yeah. So he's going to have to use his uh, stim hack. Yeah. He or needs the other option is how much, how much credits has he got? He's got seven credits, which is enough to get through into his HQ. And he could account siphon and then run on the other server and then try and force him so he's not able to res ice. Pro problem is, that he needs a token on Cripsis for every run on HQ. So that yes. is four actions to run those two account siphons. And that would still leave Synquetica with three credits, which is enough to score an agenda. So he can't really do that. He may go for a siphon, but I Guess he will go for a steam hack instead. I, at this moment, he just can't. He can't afford to let that card stay like that.
this is the kind of situation as a corporation where he drew so many agendas and that actually helped him. Whereas as corporations, many play, corporations play, they draw agenda after agenda. Uh, it's really hard for them because uh, they say, oh, I keep drawing agenda and nothing useful. I just feel that Fritz, uh, uh, Frizzle could have been more aggressive this game, you know? Like, the, it seemed, he seemed to be doing a lot of credit draws when there was opportunities to do runs. Yeah, he's... You know, uh, you, you, and you can't win unless you run. He's a very conservative and consistent player. Um, he's not playing bad, uh, he's, but he's just not following the uh, run carelessly motif of many runners. And I think it's, it is suits his play. Is there much dynamical changes between the original Netrunner and this new game? I mean, this new game is quite different, isn't it? Mm, the dynamic of the game is pretty much the same. The bad publicity changed things a bit, but uh, bad publicity was not that big in the old one either. There you go. Count Siphon. Okay, so he's going to Siphon him and then probably run with a Steam hack on the other server. Let's That's see how he it. plays it. This is uh, really going to put it down to the wire. We're going to have a six all, and this is the time. This is a great time for Steam Hack too, because the uh, the you know the problem with Steam Hack obviously is the brain damage, right? But uh, yeah. this late in the game, if you don't have the cards in your hand, you're probably not going to win. Yeah, no, I think it's not the uh, brain damage he's afraid of at the moment. Exactly. And he does have uh, plus grid carapace, so he's fairly safe against uh, uh, Scorched Earth. Why is he asking to res? Is he running on the remote server? No, no, he's uh, running on the... Uh, oh, right, right. He's running on the uh, HQ, um, but before he actually accesses, the runner has an opportunity to res something. So he may be res enough cards, enough upgrades or assets, so that the um, account siphon doesn't steal as many money. Yep, gotcha. But in this case, obviously, it does make a difference. Uh, sense for Sequetica to waste his money. It's really interesting to see how uh, uh, Fritz is going to play it. If he removes the tags right now, instead of running again, he's lost. On the other hand, he should, because he knows Sequetica doesn't have any cards in his hands. He only has one card. It's almost impossible he has uh, uh, the luck that he uh, draws another He's running on the remote server, so yeah, no definitely. worries. But the interesting thing is that the, the credit swing from that account siphon has put Sinquetica underneath the 10 credits needed to raise Hadrian's yep. wall. Yep. So he probably won't even need to use his stim hack because he should have tons now. What's he got? Yeah, but he's yeah, probably going credits. to do it anyway because... Uh, well, he's probably doing the mental calculation in his head at the moment. It costs him... Uh, an archer would cost him 10 and uh, an enigma will cost him 3. So he doesn't need to use a uh, steam hack. So that's why he's not using it. He he has in his mind the most expensive eye he, eyes he might face, and uh, none of them is enough to require a steam hack. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Breaks enigma. So he's going to snipe that agenda, and he. He's in a really good situation because he doesn't have anything to lose from those tags and he can take them out at his leisure next turn. It would be actually quite nasty if uh, Synquetica was running closed accounts, but I sincerely doubt he is. A lot of people do think that the, the tagging system in this game is a little under, but underdeveloped. I mean, the, it, it seems that you can have... Oh, he won the game! Wow! No! This guy, he has all the luck. <laughs> Unbelievable. What were the chances of pulling out another takeover? But so that's the thing you get with Wayland. Wayland often has a lot of these small cards that have small amounts of agendas. So you pull tons and tons and tons of agendas. 
And I think it really does change up the whole flow of the game from having, you know, all your agenda points concentrated on a few cards and your agenda points spread out on a mass of cards. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's game. Okay. We're going to go next the next game. But uh, the good thing is that Fritz does have uh, six points uh, of uh, leeway to uh, win the next game. So he um, only needs to win before the corporation scores six points. Or basically, he needs to win before the corporation loses, and then it's a tiebreaker. So it's going to be definitely an interesting match.